In this video, we'll look at the difference between molecular geometry and electron geometry. And these are just two different ways to explain the shape or the geometry of a molecule. Probably the best way to do this is to look at two examples to see the difference between the molecular geometry and electron geometry. In both cases, we're interested in the geometry from the perspective of the central atom. Here we have the nitrogen, here from the perspective of the carbon. For NH3, we'll start with our Lewis structure. We have one, two, three hydrogens, and they're bonded to the nitrogen, and then we have one lone pair. And that lone pair is important because it's pushing down the hydrogen atoms. Let's look at this in three dimensions. So think of the purple as that central nitrogen. Remember, we have three hydrogen atoms, one, two, and you see they spread out to be as far away as they can from each other. So right now, we have what's called a trigonal planar. Everything's in one plane. Don't forget that lone pair. When we put the lone pair on, it pushes everything down. So this gives us a different geometry. So the lone pair is important. So when we look at the molecular geometry, we're not really interested in the lone pair. It's still there. We're just going to hide it. So we take the lone pair and hide it. So we still have the same geometry. It's still pushing these down. But we look at this, and we can now name this as trigonal pyramidal. It's kind of like a pyramid, and we have those three hydrogen atoms on the bottom. And they're down there because that lone pair of electrons, let's show that lone pair, it's still there. For the electron geometry, we take into account the lone pair. So now we have what's called a tetrahedral molecular geometry. So this lone pair at the top of our tetrahedron. So now we say the electron geometry, that's tetrahedral. Let's go back. So the key is with the molecular geometry, we still have the lone pair pushing things down. But when we name it, we don't really consider it in the name. For electron geometry, we have our lone pair. So we take our lone pair and these three atoms into account, give us our tetrahedral molecular geometry for NH3. Let's try this one here, CH4. This is methane. We have one, two, three, four atoms and no lone pairs. Let's look at it in 3D. So the central atom, this is going to be our carbon. Let's add those four hydrogens. One, two, they're spreading out. Three, the final one, four. And we don't have any lone pairs. Since we don't have any lone pairs, the molecular geometry and the electron geometry, they're the same. Both are tetrahedral. So since there's no lone pairs, molecular geometry, electron geometry, they're the same. Let's go back. So for the electron geometry, that takes into account the lone pairs, sometimes called the unbonded pairs of electrons. For the molecular geometry, the lone pairs are still there. They influence the geometry, but we just don't include those when we write the name. This is Dr. B with the difference between the molecular geometry and the electron geometry. Thanks for watching.